Welcome to another Photoshop video. For this foggy grey landscape image we are going to apply some lovely, colorful and vibrant morning light. So without much more talking, let's go. Here we are in the camera raw editor since we first need to do the basic raw adjustments. And as usual I'm starting with changing the profile. This time I'm going with Adobe Landscape since I want this to be colorful and this profile will boost the base saturation a little bit already. Next up I'm changing the white balance in the basic panel. Here I'm going with the cloudy white balance setting since this will just warmen up the overall image a tiny bit. Next I do want to restore a little bit of details from the brighter areas. We actually don't have lost anything but I still want to bring down the highlights all the way. This will bring out the clouds on the right side a little more which I think is pretty cool at the moment. I still want to have some brightness in this image so after bringing down the highlights I'm going to boost the whites. I'm just careful not to overexpose too much of the image but that looks good for now. Also let's start working on the dreamy look and what I like to do for this is to simply bring up the blacks. Since this will lessen the overall contrast a bit and just makes the image appear a lot softer. Just like that. Also bonus point we are going to restore a bit of detail in those dark areas around the trees. Alright, the histogram is looking pretty good. Let's see, I think I can bring down the shadows a little bit. This way we are making those foliage parts of the trees darker again. But we still have details in them after boosting the blacks previously. Then I think I do want to bring down the exposure very very slightly. Just a bit like this. Alright. Compared to before we already have a lot more colors in here. It is looking a lot softer due to the reduced contrast. Let's work a little more on this soft look and therefore I'm going to drop the clarity a bit. Also I want to add a little bit of haze by dropping the dehaze. Keep in mind this will make the image brighter as you can see looking at the histogram. But this works really really good to make everything softer. And then let's push the vibrance a bit. Alright, perfect. The dehaze was really really helpful for that soft look. But we can further improve this by using a few local adjustments. So let's head into the masks panel. And the very first mask I have applied is for the sky. So it's basically a color range selection for the blue part of the sky while I subtract a linear gradient from the bottom up just to get a soft gradient up there in the sky selection. And with this mask I do want to bring down the brightness of the upper part of the sky. So let's just drop the exposure here. I don't want to drop it too much but this looks like a good spot. Then next up let's work on some glow. For this reason I have applied this radial gradient and I always apply those on the brightest part of the image. You can see here it's on the right side where the sunlight is supposed to come in. And adding glow is really easy, I'm just going to boost the blacks. In this case we could make this area even brighter by bringing up the whites. I guess we will get some overexposure now. but. A tiny bit is okay in my opinion, especially in those brighter areas. Okay, next let's introduce some color to this glow. Therefore I'm bringing up the temperature and I'm going to raise it a lot here. Since I want to have some very very warm light. Now at this point it might start to look a bit too yellow. In this case we can change that by simply introducing some more tint as well. And this works really really good. Awesome. Then let's bring up the saturation and just make it really colorful. And of course for a more intense glow effect I can drop the dehaze as well. Again this works really really good in here. Nice. Now looking at the histogram you can see it looks a bit weird and we do have some overexposure. But in this case I really like the look of it. So let's leave it at that for now. 
Next up, I do have two more radial gradients, which I'm just using to add a little more fog in this image. You can see the smaller one on the left side. Here I'm just dropping the dehaze a little bit. All right, that's it. And for the next one, again, I'm just playing around with some negative dehaze. Not only will this add fog, but also you can see this will make this area a little brighter. Perfect, now that's it for the local adjustments. And you can see there's a huge improvement to before. We now have a very, very dreamy look with all the glow going on on the right side. Let's work a little more on the colors. And I'm going to start in the curve tab with the red channel. Here I'm just picking the point for the highlights and slightly drag it to the left. Very, very careful here, since this will overexpose the image easily, but it also adds a very subtle red tone to the image, which is great for sunrise or sunsets. Next up, let's head into the color mixer panel. Actually, forgot to reset those settings here, but it's basically just increased reds, orange and yellow saturation. So that's all there is to it here. We got the split toning. This is also very helpful for those vibrant sunset shots. Here I do want to apply a very warm look for the highlights first, somewhere in this range. And let's bring up the saturation quite a bit. Perfect. Then for the midtones, I do want to apply a cold color tone, just so we don't get overwhelmed by all those warm tones. Let's see, this looks like a good hue tone but I do want to bring down the saturation just like that. And for the shadows, we are doing the same thing. We are going with the cold color tone somewhere in this range. But again, let's bring down the saturation. Perfect. Now that's it for the color grading. Finally, we can head into the calibration tab and here just bring down the blue primary hue a little bit and also boost the saturation here. This will just help adding some more red tones to this image. All right, so I don't need sharpening for this shot. So let's open this right away in Photoshop to finish the editing. First off, of course, we want to get rid of a few things here. But for this reason, I'm using the lasso tool. I'm just making a very rough selection. All right, let's hit Shift F5 with content aware selected. Just hit OK and the sign is gone. Let's do the same on this tree here. Again, Shift F5 and hit OK. Perfect. Now this sign is a little harder to fix. So first off, I'm going to make a selection around the bottom part. Again, Shift F5, hit OK, and let's hope it works. This did work pretty good. Now comes the hard part though. Actually, I think I need to create a backup layer just in case I mess something up. So I'm going to press Ctrl J and then let's try the content aware fill on this sign. That wasn't so bad, but I need to use the clone stamp tool to make it look a little more natural here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And I'm also using the spot healing brush to get rid of those things besides the road. Okay, perfect. Looks much cleaner. Let's continue. Uh, what do I want to do now? I think I want to dodge this image a bit. So let's create a new layer and change the blending mode to overlay. Then I'm using the TK panel plugin, which I'm using to select the midtones by pressing this button right there. And you can see a tiny bit of the foreground is selected where I want to apply the dodging. Can make the selection a little brighter by selecting the second midtones by pressing this button. So I guess let's try it with this luminosity mask and apply it on our overlay layer. Then with the white brush, I am going to paint in a little more brightness in here Let's see, maybe also over the trees. All right, that looks perfect. 
And of course, I also want to enchant the glow on the right some more. So let's create another layer. This time I'm going with the soft light blending mode, which I usually use for the glow effect. Then I'm hitting B again to select a brush. And with the brush selected, I'm holding down the Alt key to pick up a color tone from this area. Before we paint in the glow, let's bring down the brush opacity. We don't want to overdo this. And then let's simply add a little more glow in here. Perfect. Now that's a dreamy image. Finally, I do want to check out the Nick Collection plugin. So I'm going to merge all those layers. We don't need to adjust anything anymore in here. So let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. So right away, I have the Brilliant Swarm filter selected. This might be a little too heavy on the warmth side, so I'm going to drop it slightly. And maybe let's bring down the saturation as well. But I think that looks pretty good. And I just want to check out a few other filters, so I'm going to add one more. And let's see what the polarization effect does here. You can see that's not working that good. So maybe the Glamour Glow, which also doesn't look that good. So I think I'm just going with the Brilliance Warmth effect for now. And let's hit OK. Perfect, and here we have the finished image. So I hope this video was interesting and helpful. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.